This is ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz. Thank you for letting us into your homes tonight. Is the state of New Mexico ready to legalize adult use marijuana? In two days, a special legislative session called by the New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham will again take up that question. This after faltering in the final hours of a 60-day legislative session as the Senate proposed a set for debate in favor of other bills. If passed, New Mexico could become only the third state in the nation to pass legalized marijuana through the legislative process instead of bringing it before voters, L like it's been done in the majority of other states that you see right here. It shows the disparities of state laws when it comes to adult use medicinal and decriminalization status. New Mexico shares borders with two other states with legalized recreational marijuana, Colorado and Arizona right there. New Mexico and Texas are currently at odds over the level of legality, but agree on one thing, no adult uh, recreational use. If that changes for New Mexico, that would create an entirely new dynamic between the Lone Star State and the land of enchantment. As the nation looks to crawl out of the economic nightmare left behind as one of the side effects of COVID-19, New Mexico is turning to cannabis to, pull, to help pull the state out of its economic dilemma. On Friday, New Mexico governor announced March 30th as the start of a special legislative session. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham wants lawmakers to finish work on legislation surrounding adult use recreational marijuana. That session is scheduled to start in just a few days, but legalizing, but legalizing rec recreational marijuana is proving to be a divisive issue. Governor Grisham contends recreation adult marijuana can put millions of dollars, at least $125 million, into state coffers during the first year, then hundreds of millions more every year after that. But what happens in Las Cruces has an effect on El Paso and vice versa. The bill has its opponents. One of them is Dona Ana County Sheriff Kim Stewart, who says it's too soon to pass this bill because law enforcement has no tool to determine if a person is driving under the influence of pot. Another opponent of that bill is Las Cruces Mayor Ken Miyagishima. The mayor says legalizing marijuana could put pot into the wrong hands. Also joining us is State Representative Andrea Romero. Ms. Romero is in favor of legalizing cannabis for recreational use. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And I'm going to start with you, uh, Mayor Miyagishima. Why are you uh, against this bill? Well, thank you, Saul. And uh, I want to say hello to our representative, Andrea. Well, well uh, so I'm in a unique position as a policymaker and a businessman. And so I want to start off with this. In 2018, the U.S. health care costs uh, topped $3.6 trillion. That's basically equivalent to the country's budget, okay? Uh, that's $11,000 per person. If you go back in time in 1960, the, the costs were $27.2 billion or roughly $146 per person. So prior to 1973 and the introduction of the HMO Act of 1973, typically hospitals were, were nonprofit. Now you're starting to see people profit off of person's health, and I don't think that's right. New Mexico, believe it or not, ranks number four in the nation as far as the percentage of hospitals that are for profit. We have 43% of our hospitals are for profit hospitals. That's a lot, so, and I, I just don't think that, that using marijuana as, as a means of, of raising revenue is the right thing to do. Uh, again, let me just say this. <clears throat> Rising health healthcare costs, so when someone goes to the hospital without insurance and the, and the hospitals have to take care of it because of whether they, whatever, if there was some kind of cause because of the uh, marijuana, those are constantly, those costs are gonna be affected by everyone who has healthcare uh, measures insurance and such all right let's let's also, uh, yeah let's give miss miss romero an opportunity before we end this segment right here miss romero why are you in favor of legalizing pot thank you for that question you know we've been on this journey for a while as new mexico and new mexicans within the legislative process and looking at this issue closely as a possible revenue uh opportunity um, but again as something that looks at diversifying our economy um, reducing the harm that has come from criminalizing 
those who have used cannabis, saving the state money from so much of the targeting of this substance. Um, of course, being that we've had a medical program with cannabis for so long, and, in, and of course, ensuring the promotion of consumer safety and public safety in the process. Um, 35 states have legalized medical cannabis, and uh, now 16 states, including New York, um, have legalized recreational cannabis, adding to the three states that have gone through the legislative process. Um, so that's the fourth state just in the last week um, that has now legalized. So this is definitely coming down the pike for New Mexico and for the United States. Um, this just gives New Mexico the opportunity to do it right with a very focused social justice component in order to be able to rectify the wrongs that the and the harms that the drug war have caused throughout our state um, and also provide an, a really uh, interesting and exciting opportunity to bring in revenue um, that many New Mexicans support. 74% of New Mexicans support the legalization process, of course, with a very safe and focused way of doing uh -huh. that. Uh, Mayor Miyagi, she meant, Joel, what about that argument? It's going to add, put money in the state coffers. Well, I'm going to make a calculated statement, uh, Saul and Representative Romero. Smoking pot will not make you healthier. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's probably the opposite. So I'm just not comfortable making money off of someone's uh, health. You know, rising care costs, as I mentioned, Anytime that's going to that's going to raise everyone's health insurance premiums if they have it. Studies show that it's linked to depression, anxiety, uh, suicide planning, paranoia. What about the public driving? I just saw just before we got here, I looked up a statistic, and you just mentioned about the sheriff. This isn't going to make our roads any safer. It's going to make you know that's one of the things that we as policymakers have to make sure that those public roadways are safe, and. Uh, you're driving under the inf the influence isn't good. Okay. We're going to take, uh, before I let you respond, uh, Mr. Romero, we're going to take a really quick break. You're watching ABC7 Extra. While other states that have passed recreational marijuana legislation through voter approval, New Mexico is looking to lawmakers to approve this law. I'll ask my guest what impact this will have on communities who may not want a dispensary in their backyard. You're watching ABC7 Extra, where news comes first. If you rank 20 midsize SUVs by lowest maintenance cost, the Volkswagen Atlas and Atlas Crossport rank number one and number two, beating Subaru, Toyota, and Honda. So really, the only thing better than a Volkswagen is a Volkswagen. Now's a smart time to get into a Volkswagen SUV at our Sign Then Drive event. Lease a new Atlas Crossport for zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero due at signing, or get 0% APR financing for 72 months. With Long John Silver's $10 shrimp shares, you can enjoy grilled shrimp, hand batter shrimp, or popcorn shrimp. Your choice for just 10 bucks, because now is not the time to scrimp on shrimp. Long John Silver's Fish Share. With Root Insurance, you have the power to control your own rates, and that could save you a lot of money. Root is a new type of car insurance that looks deeper than other insurers by using the sensors in your smartphone to understand important details about how you actually drive. That's how Root is able to give better drivers a better price. Here's how it works. Download our app, get on the road, and then get a quote. Learn how you can take control of your car insurance at joinroot.com. Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso's five sale is on all month long. Don't miss these price drops on over 400 new Hyundais. Like new 2021 Kona's, five savings, 4,000 off MSRP. That's 4,000 off. And new Sonata's, five savings, 5,000 off MSRP. That's five grand. And new Santa Fe's, not four, not five, but five sale savings, 6,000 off MSRP. Plus, get 0% APR for 72 months on select new Hyundais. Flash savings exclusively at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. Stop by the Furniture Outlet to furnish your home with the best brands like Simmons, Signature Design by Ashley, Coaster Fine Furniture, Crown Mart, Corsicana Bedding, Home Elegance, and Furniture of America. We've got the best deals in town at the Furniture Outlet. You have to take the session where you find it. A lot of new members in a pandemic. New Mexicans, I would say, are more frustrated uh, than uh, we might find them last year. A lot has changed. They're anxious, fearful, and also productively right firm about what they expect from us. 
I also want to welcome back to ABC7 Extra, Sunday edition, Las Cruces Mayor Ken Miyagashima. The mayor says legalizing marijuana could put pot into the wrong hands. Also joining us is State Representative Andrea Romero. Ms. Romero is in favor of legalizing cannabis for recreational use. Before we went to break, uh, Ms. Romero, we had the, the, the mayor comment on how this probably may not be the safest thing to do in terms of health. Your opinion on that, Ms. Romero? Well, first and foremost, you know, our medical cannabis program is about health. Um, you know, since 1978, New Mexico has been at the forefront of looking at cannabis as actually a health resource. And many, many, many New Mexicans, hundreds of thousands, in fact, um, are you are using that program um, for the medical benefits of cannabis. So there's obviously a, a health benefit, um, but working with mitigating any sort of potential public health uh, pr problem is about partnering with our state health department, partnering with uh, our public safety department, and all of that is throughout the legislation that you will see today. Cannabis is not new to our state. It's not new to Texas. Um, it's not new to the United States. Um, it has been around for eons, for decades, for generations. The question is how we want to regulate it to ensure that any sort of product that would be available for adult use um, was well regulated. We knew exactly what was in it, and you're not just getting some illicit drug off of the street for consumption, which is what happens today if we don't step in to make sure we manage this. And not only that, we do get the benefit of receiving the taxes um, on that regulated product to repurpose into public safety, into public health, into our schools, into our roads, into all of the different programs that we're seeking um, for that diversification that will come when we, uh, you know, are, are able to actually get this um, approved yeah. through our legislative process. Uh, Mayor Magashima, what, uh, there's obviously the, 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 the fact that this is going through legislation, this is not going for voter approval, like for instance, Arizona. Does this, does this feel as though perhaps we're ramming this down the throats of people of New Mexico? Well, you know, so I think it should be uh, statewide, it should be on the ballot. You know, this is something that is significant that's, that I think is going to cast a, a large stain on the state. And I think it should be something that the voters should be able to vote for. Um, but let me just say, let me circle back and say, I do support um, medical marijuana for uh, medicinal purposes. So, you know, again, I think though that this is something here that studies have significantly shown that uh, marijuana impairs judgment, uh, motor coordination, reaction time. Uh, there's a direct correlation between the the blood THC concentration and impaired driving. I mean, there's just there's just so many negatives that that um, and and we're, and the and the state actually is doing pretty decent as far as income. And again, and I, I appreciate the governor looking out for oil and gas interests because uh, the state receives tremendous amount of income from that, but passing marijuana just to raise money I think is ill-advised and not very not prudent let's move on from the medicinal question on to the question uh, Mr. Romero regarding uh, who will be able to access recreational marijuana is it something because we do know that in Texas there are groups who have been trying to pass it and has failed continuously over here in Texas so obviously the possibility is that we will have people from El Paso crossing into Las Cruces to, to, for those uh, dispensaries who will be able to access recreational uh, marijuana? So we have been very clear that this is about over 21 year old. You must be 21 years or over in order to be able to participate in the recreational market. It will be heavily regulated just as we see with alcohol and how we've improved uh, processes in, in regulating um, alcohol in our state. No one will be able to touch this substance unless they are 21 or over. Um, and so with that, uh, you know, we want to make sure that packaging is clear, marketing is clear, that no ch child um, under the age of 21, no adult under the age of 21 can access the substance. Mayor Miyagashima, that was one of your concerns that pot could fall into the wrong hands. One of them that you mentioned, as a matter of fact, you're quoting in the newspaper, uh, pregnant women could be able to use this or just about anyone could be able to use this. That is one of your biggest concerns, right? Yes, and let me just say earlier in the program, I talked about I'm both a policymaker and a businessman. Now, let me just switch over to the business point of view. Um, I'm sure there are still people who smoke cigarettes, right? And they take cigarette breaks. <clears throat> so imagine as an employer that someone, is, they go out and smoke their, their mar marijuana cigarette, right? And so let me just tell you what, where that's gonna cost an employer. 
uh, inconsistent work quality, increased absenteeism, carelessness, mistakes, errors in judgment, needless risk taking. Let me ask you something. If you were flying in an airplane, would you want your pilot to have uh, to smoked uh, marijuana? Let um, me be really clear. We do not at all um will we will not allow any driving while intoxicated those laws are already on the books and again cannabis is available it's just illicit right now for those that aren't involved in the medical market our employers across the state are empowered to create their own uh, rules, norms, and regulations. You still cannot operate machinery under the influence. None of that will change in our state. Um, what we're trying to do is rectify the wrongs that have ravaged our communities based on the drug war, those that have been artificially targeted for possession of, uh, of cannabis, and ensuring that those who um, can participate responsibly in a 21 and overuse category will be able to. I have to. a follow-up question to that. Does the legislation that you all lo are looking at, uh, does it provide for some way for law enforcement to be able to detect the use of marijuana, driving under the influence, or uh, as Mr. Uh, Mr. Mary just said, flying under the influence? Does Is that in your legislation? So we we do uh, as much as we can to ensure that our uh, law enforcement are well trained on detecting any sort of driving while impaired um, or any impairment whatsoever. Um, so as far as there being a test, um, you know, the science just unfortunately has not met uh, that point. However, our law enforcement are very well trained. They're very well equipped already. Again, um, they have for decades had to deal with this situation and are very well equipped to understand who is under the influence. And Mr. Mayor, I'll let you respond after the break, okay? We're going to take another quick break. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Sunday, uh, still ahead, I'll ask both sides what they expect will happen during a special legislative session aimed at deciding whether or not New Mexico will pass recreational marijuana. We'll be right back. The unknown is not empty. It's a storm that crashes and consumes, replacing thought with worry. But one thing can calm uncertainty, an answer. Uncovered through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. An answer that leads to even more answers. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. Why am I so calm right now? Because this isn't a spy thriller. This is a Nissan sales event ad. Right on cue. This Rogue has more standard safety technologies than that Route 4. It's almost too easy. Hurry, this low 229 per month lease on the 2021 Rogue ends March 31st. Tick tock, time's running out. Great American Steak Burger is El Paso's original steak burger restaurant, providing outstanding food and service based on the tradition of our founders since 1985. Our two locations on the east side at Yarbrough and Montwood and on the west side at Mesa Hills near Sullivan Park Mall have on-site, hand-cut, aged choice steaks as well as an amazing selection of delicious seafood and, of course, our signature steak burgers. Dine in our family-friendly atmosphere or order to go and enjoy your favorite meal at home. Enjoy your next meal out with the Great American Steak Burger family, El Paso owned and operated for over 35 years. Get pre-approved for your low-rate TECU auto loan now. Welcome back to ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Joining us now is Las Cruces Mayor Ken Miyagishima. The mayor says legalizing marijuana could put pot into the wrong hands. Also joining us is State Representative Andrea Romero. Ms. Romero is in favor of legalizing cannabis for recreational use. Let's get back to that. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to, to give you the opportunity to respond to what Ms. Romero, Representative Romero, was saying in reference to um, not putting uh, marijuana uh, in the hands of the wrong people, A. B, whether or not law enforcement has the ability to detect whether or not someone is either driving or, as you just said, flying under the influence. You know, earlier uh, this year, we had a presentation from Las Cruces Police Department 
and and I'm sorry, but uh, they basically support what uh, the sheriff said. They have no way of determining whether someone is under the influence other than uh, probably blood tests and things of this nature. They won't be able to spot that right off the, the get-go. Yeah. So there is no type of a, a breath analyzer that they can use. And, and, and I'm sorry, but forgive me, Representative, uh, I, I, most businesses don't allow drinking on the job, but it still happens. And, 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 they, and they get hurt. And, I've, and I'm, I believe that that will happen also. So now you've compounded the problem, people getting hurt on the job, workers' comp uh, costs going up, and possibly some getting losing their life. So I just don't think it's worth it. It's not like um, marijuana is this, you know, like I said, it's not something that you get healthier. Okay, it, it decreases your health. And, and I, I just don't think this is the right thing to do. I have this next question is for both of you. I know it was a big concern in Arizona. It definitely was in Colorado when it was passed, but it was the, the uh, criminal element coming into the state. Is that a big concern, Mayor? That the criminal, the bat element can come into Las Cruces or, uh, or New Mexico because of marijuana? You know, so I haven't researched that. You know, I was just looking at it, like I said, from a policy standpoint, from why, why benefit off of someone's health, and then also from a business standpoint. Uh, I, I have been told, and of course I haven't had a chance to research this, but that the THC concentration will be a lot larger and people could uh, seriously get ill. So I, I don't know about the criminal element of it. You would think it might actually uh, come down. However, I did read something, and I, again, I haven't been able to verify this, but that if this makes it easier to, to handle, they're going to reduce the prices of some of the harder drugs, uh, heroin and meth, to to get that product out. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? So if, if, if people are going to say, oh, I'll just use this, then they're going to lower the prices and then make that even more affordable. I don't know. I haven't researched that. Yeah. I'm just telling you that's what uh, I've heard. Representative Romero, I saw you uh, shaking your head. You don't, you don't agree with that at all. No, from all of the research that we have, n not only does legalization actually um, in improve upon what folks are um, actually looking to do, which when we look at all of the studies in comparison to even alcohol, cannabis is much safer as a substance um, in adult use situations. If you talk to law enforcement, they would much prefer somebody that they were engaging with to be um, using cannabis versus alcohol. Um, so when we look at some of the things that we've stratified, you know, a lot of the things that we've legalized in the past have been really arbitrary. Again, alcohol over cannabis. Um, when you look at the history, it had a lot more to do with criminal uh, communities of color than anything else, worrying about the safety or the regulation of something. Um, as far as the safety of our communities, the illicit market, as it's currently able to, you know, run amok, and while we've continued to fight the drug war without regulating, without properly regulating and taxing the cannabis industry, we can always count on drug dealers to be doing that dealing um, in our communities. And until we provide a safe and a quali high quality way for folks to access something they're already seeking access to, um, this is the right way to do it. And again, benefits the state overall, which allows us to actually repurpose that information into education. Um, so when we look at the concentration of THC in a substance, right now it's completely unregulated. It's entirely on the street. So hopefully uh, when we do legalize this, we can get a handle on all of that, educate consumers consumers, educate those who are seeking uh, this substance and are able to educate them about what's safe and what's not safe. Representative Romero, the uh, special legislation is coming up in just a few days. Your thoughts on what's going to happen? What do you believe will be the outcome? Well, we're so grateful for the governor to be paying such close attention to this issue. We think that New Mexico is so ready for this. Um, we've heard from folks around the state, from industry, from farmers to uh, those in our communities who are seeking after opening new businesses, um, being able to, to look at the opportunities for revenue and diversification in our state. We're hopeful that the special session is the final road uh, to getting this through the finish line and getting it to the governor's desk. So we're very very, very hopeful and we're we want um, all of those New Mexicans who are watching this closely to know that we're we're gonna do it this is this is definitely uh, you know what we hope for um, and we'll get it through the finish line Mayor Miyagashima were you hoping that perhaps some communities would have the uh, the option of uh, keeping dispensaries out of their communities well that would be great um, if, if anything that is the worst you know the best case scenario 
But I have to just say, so I don't think special sessions uh, should be used for something like this. I think it's honestly, it's an abuse of power. There goes the checks and balance between the Senate and the House and the executive. Uh, if they couldn't get passed in a session, then you wait another year. You know, what happens if it stalls again? Is she going to call another special st session to do this? You know, I, I think the, the, the representatives and the senators represent New Mexicans from from um, Las Cruces to Clayton to to Farmington to uh, Jow, right? And, and Socorro in the middle. <clears throat> and if they didn't pass it, then they didn't pass it. And that should be next year's goal. Yeah. Representative Romero in, in the uh, Romero in the 30 seconds that I have left was that even a consideration of giving communities the, the ability to say no dispensary in my backyard. So we've learned a lot from other states who have legalized, in particular California, which is the largest experiment that we've seen throughout the United States. And when they did give the opportunity to basically create that checkerboard of some have access, some don't, it actually creates a real conundrum for law enforcement to follow not only the illicit market that they're seeking to stamp out, but also for uh, where what communities can do to keep it out in the way that they had tried to. So it creates a real unfairness, not only in the business community but from the access point for those communities that want it but again uh -huh. there's local rule for those who really who want that um, in their community and how to regulate it properly from that community's perspective okay mayor miyagashima representative romero thank you so much for taking time to talk to us thank, thank you, you so much. much and thank you for joining us i'm saul size and this has been abc7 extra good night y buenas noches